John, uh, Chief Justice John Marshall will um, rule in favor of the uh, Cherokee Nation. Again, Cherokee Nation versus Georgia, 1831, combat the uh, Indian Removal Acts. John Marshall says in Cherokee Nation versus Georgia, that without a doubt, without question, it's the Cherokee's land. They don't have to move. However, he does not have jurisdiction over that. So he cannot, actually technically he can't rule on it. Then Georgia then passes a state law um, that uh, uh, in 1832 that will help limit the uh, Cherokees to that land. And in, in Worcester versus Georgia, uh, Marshall does rule a Georgia law unconstitutional and says that Georgia law cannot carry over into Cherokee land. All right, so in that regard, it's not uh, it, it's not the, the Cherokee Nations does not have to leave. Jackson uh, defies the Supreme Court and, uh, and orders the military to remove to move thousands of, uh, of Indians um, you know west of the Mississippi. Uh, historians have labeled this the, the Trail of Tears which um, which is justifiable the uh, the cruelty of, of having Indians having to, to literally walk from Georgia to Oklahoma cost thousands of lives. Um, and that indeed is one of Jackson's legacies, right or wrong, good or bad, that is a Jacksonian legacy. And in this case, in the Indian removal, he's ruling in favor of the states over uh, the, the national government, basically just defying Chief Justice John Marshall. Next big thing is the Jackson presidency is the Bank of the United States. 20 year term, 1816 to 1836, the Bank of the U.S. houses all the federal funds, tax money, tariff money, land sales money, it's all in the bank. Um, Jackson was not a fan of the National Bank. Again, personal, uh, he had personal issues with the bank when he lost his money and um, he lost about 12 large to, in, a, in a bank in Philly. And he also had a uh, general distrust for banks as a tool for the elite. Um, Jackson also preferred hard money, like, uh, like gold coins, gold silver, uh, gold coins, silver coins, over paper currency, because there's really diff it's difficult to check reg uh, inflation, difficult to, to regulate banks that issue paper money. So that Jackson, that was his preference. Now. Um, the uh, bank president, Nicholas Biddle, uh, successfully gets Congress to recharter the bank in 1832 for another 20 years. Jackson vetoes that. Jackson liked the veto. He used the veto a lot um, in comparison to the first six presidents. So Jackson vetoes the bank rechartering, calls it a monster, a tool for the wealth, a tool for the, tool for the elite, wants to get it done. Um, they override his veto. 1832 election, he campaigns that he's anti-bank, wins handsomely, you know, um, uh, blows the, uh, the, the National Republican candidate uh, away in the 32 election. So then after he wins, he, he orders his secretary of the treasurer to remove all the federal funds and give them to state banks or pet banks um, to distribute that uh, as, as they wish. Now, like any, anybody who's just given a large sum of money, they are going to spend. So what this does, the, the immediate effect of this, um, giving the money to the state banks, uh, people started borrowing money um, and, and, and buying land as, as soon as possible. For, so speculation went up, uh, people were buying on credit, and uh, these new banks are just printing off money and just giving it away. Everyone is just money, 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 money. I want to buy, 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 and that of course is causing prices to go up. A lot like the housing market, you know, housing market in the early 2000s. Everybody was buying. It was super easy to borrow money. Everybody was buying houses. House values went up. All right. Now, um, as rapid inflation was going uh, and, and all the speculation and land. Prices were skyrocketing, and the land prices were a lot more than what the value actually was. Jackson passes a law called the Species Circular that required gold and silver when buying public land. That basically brings the economy to a standstill, 
now people actually had land that um, was not worth as much money as they had to borrow to purchase it. So basically this is going to be uh, causing a downward turn in the economy um, and that's going to lead to the panic of 1837. Um, now, in this case, he's acting as, as, as an interest to the, uh, to the common man, to the states, not as a national government leader. Because if he followed the national government, he knows that the bank was constitutional uh, from McCulloch versus Maryland, and he also knows that Congress overrode his veto. So here he's clearly uh, thinking about uh, the states and the common man. And Jackson's opponents label him King Andrew, um, <coughs> and they quickly form to become the Whig Party. Uh, make a, the Whigs make a big mistake in 1836, and they, they run three candidates, and they basically cancel each other's electoral votes out, and Martin Van Buren basically becomes the next president in 1837. And he is greeted warmly with a panic. And of course, people are all upset about Van Buren's presidency because you can see massive unemployment, uh, people losing their jobs, wages are getting cut, hours are getting cut, high prices for food, for land, nobody has any money, uh, banks are just collapsing, and if you had money in a bank and the bank failed, oh well, you're done, forget about it. And so this all kind of led to a, uh, a panic of 37. Uh, and that, in essence, really is uh, the main aspect of Chapter 11. And, you know, one thing to keep in mind is that definition of, uh, of, of Andrew Jackson's Jacksonian democracy. Was it truly a time of democracy? Um, you can argue yes, more people were voting. You could argue no, common man stayed common. And that, that sort of, that's the separating the myth and the reality of the age of Andrew Jackson. Hope this helps. Good luck on your quiz. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you in 7054. Take care.